Okay, so this video is to introduce you and give you the basics for graphing secant and cosecant by hand. And to be very honest with you, I know that you probably are like, oh, graphing another set of trig functions, this is so much to remember. However, there's something very important about secant and cosecant that you learned. The very important thing that you learned is that they are the reciprocals of sine and cosine. So if we make a cosine graph, we can reciprocate it or flip it over to make the secant graph. And if we make a sine graph, we can reciprocate it or flip it over to make the cosecant graph. So, um, number one, if you look on page 260, it shows you the cosine and secant graph back to back and the sine and cosecant graph. Um, it tells you about the functions. If you can just make a little correction on the range, it should be a bracket on the negative one and a bracket on the one, and same thing in the cosecant box. Their periods are still 2 pi. Their domain we're going to talk about when I show you a graph. Um, and they're going to have some asymptotes, which we're going to talk about also. And then they have symmetry about the origin. On the top of page 261, it talks about the steps. Um, and I'm actually going to jump right in and kind of show you how to do a problem. So if you look on the bottom of page 261, it says sketch a graph of 2 cosecant x plus pi over 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend for a second, just for a second, that this says sine. And we're going to make a sine table like we used to. No big deal. So we would do 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and a... 2 pi. So I'm going to fix this horrible looking 2 for a second. And then the values that we would put over here we would call our y values because sine is the y part of the ordered pair. And it would be 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And then we're going to look <coughs> excuse me, at the equation. Is there any transformation that affects my thetas or my angles? Well, yes. There's pi over 4 right here, and it's a girly thing, and since it says plus, we're really going to subtract a pi over 4. So we're going to get 0 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. The next one might be a little more difficult. 3 halves is like 1.5, and a quarter is like... 20, 0.25, so 1.5 minus 0.25, or 1.5 minus a quarter is going to get me 1.25, which is the same thing as 5 pi over 4. And then 2 pi minus a quarter is going to be like 1.75. And if you think, go, go to 2 pi and go a quarter down, you get 7 pi over 4. Put a little star here, so remember it's my final column. And then we look at what happened to the y part of the equation on the outside part. Well, there's a 2, so we're going to multiply all these by 2. So we're going to have 0, 2, 0, negative 2, and a 0. Put a little star here. So there's my table. And so what I'm going to do is let me shrink this down for a second. And we're just going to graph the dots like we used to. So at, oh, I made a huge boo-boo, I'm so sorry, up here, that 0 minus a pi over 4 should have definitely been a negative pi over 4. So sorry about that. Okay, so now we're going to graph. So at negative pi over 4, we're still going to stay at 0. And then at pi over 4, we're going to be up at 2. And at 3 pi over 4, we're back at 0. And at 5 pi over 4, we're at negative 2. And at 7 pi over 4, we're back at 0. Okay, so I'm going to draw in this graph. And just for sakes of um, having a really good graph, I'm going to kind of complete the pattern and draw more than one cycle. So if I go back... Um, at negative 
3 pi over 4, you should be at negative 2. And then at negative 5 pi over 4, you're back at 0. And at negative 7 pi over 4, you're back up here at 2 pi. So, so there's my graph, and it, it keeps going. Okay, so here's what I need to uh, say again so that you understand what I'm saying. Sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. So we graphed sine. So this is not my final answer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a little red dotted line. This is the line that cuts my graph in half. So everywhere my black sine graph touches this red dotted line, I'm going to draw an asymptote. And I'll explain where that asymptote comes in a second, or where it comes from, sorry. But so all of these little dots where it touches the red line or the line that cuts my graph in half, I'm going to make an asymptote. And just, just for example, out here at the end of the equation, there's a plus zero. So that's where I knew where to draw the red line. Now, if it had shifted up one, then it would be everywhere where the graph touches that horizontal line, y equals one. All I'm going to do is take all these hills and valleys, and I'm literally going to flip, a.k.a. reciprocate, the graph. And you sort of stay between the asymptotes. And then I'm going to make a note to my teacher that the yellow is my final. So your options on a quiz or a test are to use colors and then make sure you tell us what color is your final graph. Or <coughs> you could go in and erase the sine graph and all of its parts, leaving the asymptotes and the hills and valleys that we flipped over. However, the only issue with that is that when you leave the sign graph in, it makes it a lot easier if you made a mistake to find the mistake you made. So I'm going to recommend that you do the colors. Okay, so I want to explain these asymptotes for a second. If you remember, sign is, by definition, y over r. So the radius is never zero if you have any kind of circles, so that's always fine. So there's no place where sine is undefined. However, <coughs> cosecant is r over y. This causes a problem, because there are places where y equals 0. And y equals 0, you're dividing by 0, which is undefined in mathematics. And on a graph, to graph undefined, we draw asymptotes. So everywhere that y is 0, we have an asymptote. And because this graph shifted over, sine used to be 0 right here at the origin. And based on the transformation, this dot moved to the left, pi over 4. So there's my new 0. And then on the sec or sorry, cosecant graph, that 0 causes an asymptote. And so I drew my asymptotes. So on the next page, we have a secant graph, which... <coughs> which we're going to treat as a cosine, because secant is reciprocal of cosine. So I have y equals 3 cosine. I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to pull out this half, and then write another parenthesis, x minus. If you have pi over 2 and you divide out that half, you should get a pi. And if you don't believe me about the pi, I'll just briefly show you. So what we had was a pi over 2, and we divided or pulled out a half. Dividing fractions is easy as pi, flip the second, and multiply. Those twos cancel out, leaving you with a pi over 1 or a pi. Okay, so now that I have a cosine, I can make my table. So I'm going to make my table like I always have. So here's my theta, and it is my y stuff that I'm going to graph, but it's the x part of the ordered pair. So 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and then cosine goes 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. And so let's look what happens. To all my angle stuff, it says multiply by a half, which 
is a girly thing, so I'm going to do the opposite and divide by a half, which is the same thing as multiplying by a 2. So I'm going to get 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. <coughs> and then to all of those, you're going to add a pi. So pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. And then to all my outside stuff, I need to follow PEMDAS, so you have to multiply before you add and subtract. So I'm going to multiply everything in here by a 3. So 3, 0, negative 3, 0, 3. And then I have to add a 1. So I'm going to get 4, 1, negative 2, 1, 4. Okay, so now I'm going to graph my dots. So at pi, I'm up at 4. And at 2 pi, I'm at 1. And I know you're like, the graph doesn't go anymore. Well, pi was a maximum. And so if you think how far is it between pi and 2 pi, it's a pi. So I can go backwards. So pi minus a pi is back to 0. I should be back at my middle and go backwards another pi. So I'm at negative pi. And my min on my graph, my minimum value is a negative 2. And then go backwards another pi. And you should be back at the middle, which is at 1. So if I, gra if I uh, draw in this cosine graph, There's my cosine graph. And I'm going to use red again because that's what I used in the last problem. Remember last time in the last problem, I, I drew a red dotted line in the middle. Well, this time, my red dotted line or my vertical shift is at 1. So everywhere I touch this red line, I'm going to draw an asymptote. So there's an asymptote. There's an asymptote, and over here there's an asymptote. Fun fact, when you draw one period of secant or cosecant, you should always have three asymptotes. One to hold or bound the parabola shape that goes down, and one to bound the parabola shape that ends up going up like this. And then again, you write a note to your teacher and say, this one's my final. So really, graphing cosecant and secant isn't that bad, especially if you know how to graph sine and cosine. The only thing you have to remember is that secant goes with cosine, and cosecant goes with sine. And please don't forget when you're all done, not only to tell us what your final is, but don't be that kid on the test that forgets, that does the green graph on this example perfectly, and then forgets to do the yellow part and flipping it back over. You don't want to leave sine as your answer or cosine as your answer when you're graphing a secant or a cosecant.